So NASA is planning on paying people $18,000 to lay around. Now there's a real purpose for this study. They're going to stay in bed for 70 days and nights. And the reason why they're doing this is because they want to see what kind of impact uh, laying around will have on an astronaut's body. And they also want to see what kind of exercises they can do to rehabilitate an astronaut after they've been stagnant for that period of time, right? So the experiment will test how effective exercise is for astronauts who lose muscle, cardiovascular, and bone function while in space. There will be two groups in this study, an exercising group and a non-exercising group. Both groups will spend two to three weeks in the bed rest facility doing normal activities. Then they will spend 10 days laying down slightly tilted with their head up and their feet up at the NASA Research Center in Texas. Now after all of that happens, for two weeks they'll have to rehabilitate themselves through exercise and it seems like it's going to be pretty vigorous. Uh, it'll include squats, cycling, walking, and uh, you know other things to basically build muscle mass after being still for a very long period of time. I think this is not appealing at all. There's no <laughs> way I would ever do this just because it puts your body through a lot. And mm -hmm. I'm an antsy person. I can't sit still and watch a movie, much <laughs> less lay around for 70 days. So that's my point on the story. Sandra, what do you think? Make your point. Oh, to get paid to lay around would be so great. <laughs> um, I mean, this is extreme. I probably wouldn't do this, but like, but the fantasy of like, yeah. Pop-Tarts and Netflix, <laughs> sweet. It'll just be like PMS for 70 days. Um, I, I think this is great. I think also as we start talking about colonizing space, at some point this information will be great for just all people involved. I wish we put this kind of thought into uh, our vets coming home from war zones yes. and, and how to rehabilitate that. I feel like this is so conscientious. Why can't we do this for all the thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that <laughs> fight for us? Awesome point. I love yeah. that. Christian, make your point. Um, yeah, this is, there's no way, I mean, as much as I love to sleep and you know that, I don't think I can, I don't think I could do this for 70 days. I mean, it's a pretty good chunk of change too, but I just, once, once I, once I wake up and I'm ready to go, I just, I can't stay in bed anymore. Like I'm ready to go. Um, and I know a lot of people do extreme things like this for, you know, meditation on paths to enlightenment and stuff like that. But I think waking up at 630 in the morning every day for yoga is enough meditation and enlightenment for me. So yeah, I don't think I could do this. I mean, and, and on top of that, it wreaks havoc on your body. I mean, it really does. just not physically, but mentally, emotionally, like I don't think I could put myself through. You have to shower using a shower head while laying yeah, down that's... in the same place. And then you have to use a bedpan in order to do wow. your business. So it's intense. Yeah. It's not as fun as like laying in bed and watching Netflix all day. All right, so here's the question. Would you rather travel to the past or to the future, Christian? That's a tough one for me. Um, the past seems awesome because you can travel anywhere. You can go see some dinosaurs, go see some cavemen, go see the pyramids being built. Um, you can also go back and do things over, right wrongs you did, uh, make your life better in the present. But there's also an aspect about the future, like if you know future events, you can plan for that, you can prepare ahead, you can look at the lotto numbers and win the lotto and be rich the rest of your life. So it's kind of a toss up for me. It's a toss up. Yeah, it's All a right, toss -up. Sandra? Uh, the future <laughs> obviously is the answer. <laughs> um, I can read about the, the past in any book, right? Mm -hmm. um, I want to know how I die? I mean, I want to see what happens in 200 years. I mean, hopefully there's a return trip and I come back to you know where I left off. Um, but I would go to the future, hands down. So many reasons. I disagree with both of you. Wow. Yeah, I think that, first of all, I'm in a really happy place right now. And so I wouldn't want to travel to the past because even though I have my regrets, I wouldn't change anything. Because if I change anything, I'm not going to be where I am today. I wouldn't travel to the future because I don't want to know how I die. I think that the whole point of living is experiencing life and the surprises that it has in store. So I don't, I don't want to go to a fortune teller. I don't want, also because I don't believe in fortune tellers, <laughs> but I also don't want to know exactly what my future is going to be. I want to be surprised. And the thought of death really scares me. So I hate the idea of knowing what my number is. And what I mean by that is the number of days that you're going to live. That's, that's so frightening. But I want to hear from you guys. Who do you agree with? Would you rather go to the past, the future, share your stories or your answers? And would you do this, I shouldn't say ridiculous, but this epic <laughs> uh, NASA experiment where you're laying around for 70 days? Do you think it makes sense? Comment in the section below. Let us know and we will see you soon.